to the very important topic project management that is fp and performance fp stands for function point metric performance stands for constructive plus model so now let us go about fp first which is been used as a major estimation technique for effort estimation productivity estimation so how the things have started in 1979 the first software estimation technique was introduced by adam albright and the first guidelines for fp were been released in the year 1984 and then in 1986 i fp ug board of directors were been formed now i fp ug means international function point user group i fp ug means international function point user group and then uh, it has got constant releases and fp metric document which was been released in the year 2004 is a 400 pages document which uh, gives in detail how to do the software estimation so doing a fp estimation what we are achieving is higher productivity higher quality less redundancy standardization and not getting affected by the cost alterations so the characteristics of fp metrics are they are been measured from the user's perspective they are technology independent they are low cost repeatable works well with the use cases so there is a use case fp estimation so use case points are been taken now we are not aware about use case points so let's not detail into that so now the applications which were being surveyed how many points were been there for star wars missile defense okay stuff was including uh, 3 lakh 50 thousand function points sap oracle is equivalent to that that is 3 lakh microsoft windows vista that is about 1 lakh 60 thousand and airline reservation is 50 thousand like that you can see that uh, if you consider whatsapp it's in the range of 10000 if you think about uh, youtube that is in the range of 20000 right so we consider them as to be great software but the functionalities that are been addressed by them are very much limited so what are the objectives of function point metrics they measure the software by quantifying the functionality requested by the uh, customer and provided to the customer so therefore it is totally user based and then it measures software development and maintenance continuously all around the projects and organization so all the phases of developments are been covered and uh, enhancement uh, support okay how it is going to affect the cost parameters it is going to focus on that and in production uh, it forms a baseline right so uh, three uses are been there for uh, the counts so development enhancement and production we next is that just have a look at this this is one more layers if you see think about the google search engine it was uh, around 20000 18640 right just have a look at facebook right 8404 uh have a look at uh, mozilla firefox another one at okay, another browser at okay, kind of on stuff yeah wikipedia twitter is uh, even uh, lesser then everything else so custom applications are below 500 now you are building the custom applications so your fps will be below 500 maybe 100 or maybe 200 okay uh, not more than that okay so 
this is the enter list which uh, suggests to you that uh, what kind of n function points are being available. Going next, how we do this? That is in requirements if there are being 100 FPs in functional de design, there are 20 FPs that are being added in detailed design, more 10 are being added and in application delivery, more 5 are being added. So, the total comes out from 100 to 135. Right, so this is a migration. So, uh, if we are covering the phases like this, the number of FPs are going to increase because number of tasks will be increasing, number of activities will be increasing. So, schedules also do depend on that and costs also do depend on that. FP is a simple metric if it is being taught in a simplistic kind of a way and my trial will be that only, right? So, what it considers as an input? It considers displays on the screen, reports that are being generated at the back end and refer to it okay, on the front end. Master files we require to store the data in a persistent kind of a way. Control files, reference files and signals. So, herein the steps, if we notice, what are the steps? Determine the type of count, identify the count scope and application boundary, count data functions, count the transaction functions, determine the unadjusted function points. We have to press that. And then, this is shortly called as UAF unadjusted function point yeah, and value adjustment factor that is VAF. So, there is an cost product of UAF and VAF that builds in FP. So, uh, this is based on, on very simple kind of a theory. Every file consists of fields, right? Those fields, if they are being grouped, they are being called as records. The groups of records are being called as bytes. We are starting with the fields, that is byte string representation. Then to record, where we have got the keys, primary keys and secondary keys. And then we move on to the bunch of records, that is files. So, there are internal logical files that are being used to store the data. Likewise, if you are using customer database, that should come up with the files. Now, let us go ahead. So, there are two types of functionalities in FP. You have to be very much sure about understanding these high points, right? So, data functionality, if it is, it has been guided by ILF, that is internal logical files. A files means set of records. Records in terms they are set of fields, right? External interface files. How many interfaces you have, right? And then on the right hand side, transaction functionality. Transaction. How the user will be transacting with the system. That is how many inputs, that is external inputs are been given, outputs are been produced queries that are being asked. So, EI, EO, EQ will be determining this stuff. So, in short, the five things are, let us begin with the data functionalities, ILF and EIF and EI, EO and EQ. Just see to it, you have what? EI and EO is the output supplied to the user. EQ will be asked by the user to what? ILF and EIF and on the other side you do the estimation and do the measurement and then provide the answer. Next is you can see to it that the ILF is just in the form of tables as I was been saying to you. The bunch of records right is nothing but the ILF right. So, the next layer isn't it? Repository persistence if it has been over. Then the next layer is the service layer. Service layer has been supported by 
EIF that is external interface file that is purchase order system something is required, uh, required to be displayed right so therefore you have what external inputs okay you can see two of them add change invoices payments right the EIF uh, demonstrated which was the order EQ is the query what is the payment status is the query asked output paid invoices is the output right and you can find the application boundary so to summarize this diagram you have what EI, EO, EQ as transaction functionalities and data functionalities are being there either at the core or at the external kind of thing, internal logical files which keeps the records and the external interface file that is for displaying the results. How to capture EI and EQ? For that also you need a certain kind of an form. Okay? So that information could be control information, user identifiable information or uh, maintenance information. Now an elementary process for the user is the smallest unit of activity meaningful to the user. It is self-contained and uh, leave the business of the application being counted in a consistent way. So if we focus on data functions that is ILA that is logical group of data. Logical group means nothing but a bunch of tables you say, bunch of records you can say, records in terms will consist of fields. Repeatedly I am quoting this and EIF that is the second uh, data functionality uh, function that the system provides is uh, to the logical grouping of the data. So how to demonstrate it okay, to uh, the external user, how to work out with the responsibility that is being demonstrated by EIF. Now, transaction functions, EI, EO, EQ. Well, I have said about this is that EI interacts with ILF, right? Add, delete, update, modify, search, sort, store can be the inputs. Where is where is some kind of an DML statement that has been uh, asked to the system for information retrieval and EQs that is the transactional function that addresses the requirements to select and display specific data from files. Remember that in ESA there could be a problem that can be asked on FP metric. Okay, so that is what is, is the importance okay, from ESC point of view. And uh, as an computer engineer, you must know FP metric and the scheduling techniques. Next is on the input side, what can be counted? Click of the mouse, search values, action keys, that is command buttons, error messages, confirmation messages, scrolling. These are all of the input mechanism, okay? On the output side, you have what values read, okay, from the external interface file or ILF. Color, font changes, okay, something from uh, uh, black turning into red, uh, error messages. So error messages and confirmation messages, they represent both the things, that is input as well as output as far as the external queries are concerned. So now what is this FTR, IED and DET? Okay, let us uh, uh, start up with the bottom most uh, element that is DET. So DET is a unique user recognizable non-recursive, non-repetitive kind of a field, right? I was saying about the field. So DET is data element type. That is the non-recursive field. In the record element type red, it is a subgroup of ILF. The red consists of DETs, right? Multiple DETs will be there. And FTR, that is a file type reference, is set of what? Is set of 
R it is. That FTR is a file type referenced by a transaction. Okay, it could be internal logical file or external interface file. So you begin with DET, you reach out to RET and then to FTR. Okay. These are all coming into ILF, especially where you are talking about tables if you are using RDB elements. So what are the DETs? Data elements, types, okay, radio buttons, check boxes, command buttons, display of graphical images or icons, photographic images. Just see to it that there are alternatives also. I have picked up the partial list, right, out of that. Now, error and confirmation messages as well as notification messages, they are, they can be counted as DHS. And RAT is recognizable subgroup of DHS. That is, uh, multiple DHS together they form RATs. They could be optional or mandatory. Counting rules. Now, this is very important. Counting rules for ILF. How many command buttons I have got? How many check boxes I have got? How many images are been there? Right? So, for ILF, the group of data or control information is logical and user identifiable. The group of data is maintained through the elementary process. Okay? That is the unique one, isn't it, that we have seen. And for EIF, you make use of uh, data that has been referenced external to it and group of data is not maintained by application being content. Who will be maintaining that? That will be ILF, right? So, for DET, we have seen command buttons and all and that. Th those will be counted, right? Let us say that uh, uh, there is an example. For an example, a before or after image for a group of 10 fields maintained for audit purposes would count as one DAT. 10 fields will be counted as one DAT for the before image, all the 10 fields, and as one DAT after image, that is all 10 fields, for a total of two DATs. So, field wise calculation is eliminated. Just try to understand this before image and after image. Two DETs are been counted. So there will be tables now here, okay, which will be coming next. In uh, second rule, that uh, when two applications maintain or reference the same ILF or EIF, but each maintains or references separate DETs. Each maintains or separates DATs, count only the DATs being used by the application to the size ILF or EIF. So, therefore, application A would count for four DATs. Just say to it, why four DATs? Street address, city, zip, and zip code. Four items are been there, so it will be counting for four DATs. Application B may see the address as one block of data without regard to the individual component, that is uh, city, state, zip code. Okay, it, it is only saying address. Address embeds city, state, and zip. So that's why only one DAT has been counted, 4 versus 1. Now here it is 7 versus 3. Just see to it that ILF concerns SSN number 1, name to as 2. Street name 3, mail stop 4, city, state, and zip. Okay. This total comes up to be same in, right? Application Z maintains only name, city, and state. So it will count only 3 DATs. So it is based on the attributization also. That's how we do. And third one, count DATs for each piece of data, right? Without uh, the direct kind of a reference to the element. So now, just try to read this uh, stuff very carefully. This is a shorthand kind of an RET rule group that is record element type. 
काउंट आरईटी फॉर ईच ऑप्शनल और मैंडेटरी सब ग्रुप ऑफ आई एल एफ एंड ई आई एफ सो ट्रांसैक्शन फंक्शन ई आई ई ओ ई क्यू जस्ट सी टू इट वॉट इज बीन चेक्ड फॉर ई आई एक्सटर्नल इनपुट्स डेटा इनपुट फील्ड्स एरर मैसेजेस कैलकुलेटेड वैल्यूज एंड बटन here also you will get data fields on report calculated values error messages column headings and so and so on yeah, about the output specialty can be the column headings right that you can identify eq input side we have seen an output side okay as we have seen okay with the previous slides now there is a table for data functions and transaction functions so our job is first up to work out with the transaction functionalities how to remember this table right now there are ratings here okay functional complexity ratings low average and high although you can use any independent quantity over here but typically a column is been selected now for transaction functions you have got 3 4 6 now how you this 3 4 6 uh, has been uh, done by studying certain 2000 projects these values are been fixed same is applicable for kokomo right 3 4 6 6 then again for okay for inputs and for queries this remains the same 3 4 and 6 now just add 1 to it 3 plus 1 4 4 plus 1 5 6 plus 1 7 okay all right so now let us uh, try to recollect the table ei 3 4 6 eq 3 4 6 and then add 1 to eo 4 5 7 now begin with 7 with the ilf write its uh, cross product over here 7 here yeah. you have to pick up this particular branch okay 7 here yeah. written in a diagonal kind of and way then the 5 5 multiplied by second row 10 here yeah. 5 multiplied by third row 15 Yeah, and the diagonality that is 10. So the values are 7, 10, 15, 5, 7, 10, and 10. So there is no uh, super story okay to remember this thing okay. 3, 4, 6, 3, 4, 6, 4, 5, 7, 7, then 7 diagonal, then 5, 10, 15, 15, then the 10 diagonal. right this is the way to remember this thing but for that you have to remember this sequence e i e o e q and i l f and e i f okay for the data functions right so let us move ahead this is an example just see to it the count is been maintained here how much is the count as i have told you can individually select also right the low average and high value that is Uh, for one case isn't it so nine has been selected four and six has been selected yeah so 20 nothing else in between that is zero and seven 18 is the count okay so total function points are coming out to be summing up the total l plus a do plus average plus i comes out to be 122 so this is an custom application anything below 500 we have rated it as a custom application now moving next this story okay that is the general software characteristics of gscs how to remember them now here with the table there are 17 points that are been indicated 17 points so out of which will be only considering 14 so how to remember this i have told you the technique of remembering it okay via 
थ्री फोर सिक्स थ्री फोर सिक्स फोर फाइव सेवन सेवन डायगोनल फाइव फाइव प्लस फाइव मल्टीप्लाइड बाई टू टेन थ्री फिफ्टीन एंड टेन डायगोनल ओके सो दिस वॉज द टेक्निक दैट वॉज बीन टोड टू यू या द नेक्स्ट थिंग इज दट हाउ टू रिमेम्बर दिस फोर्टीन पॉइंट इन योर चाइल्डहुड एट द आफ्टरनून टाइम You must have played a game called as पांच तीन दोन फाइव थ्री टू राइट इफ यू हैव प्लेड इट्स ओके इफ यू हैव एंड प्लेड एनहांस यूर जनरल नॉलेज राइट फाइव थ्री टू सो द फर्स्ट फाइव कैरेस्टिस्टिक्स जस्ट ट्राई टू रिमेम्बर दोज आर यूर फाइव फिंगर्स राइट सो द थम Thumb is for backup and recovery. Without thumb, nothing is possible. Backup and recovery. Then the second one is about uh, does it support uh, data communication? Third one, whether it supports distributed processing functions. Fourth one, whether the performance is critical. And fifth one. whether the operating system is been utilized heavily so close your eyes try to remember this five the thumb indicates backup and recovery the next finger indicates data communication as you can see you stand up you stand up you have to use the first finger then the middle finger whether it includes the distributed processing functions performance uh, criticality right and then the last one the govardhan mountain okay lifted by lord sri krishna is under on which finger okay just see to it that whether the os is utilized he will the next three points are dealing with online whether the master file is been updated online whether the online transactions are there on multiple screens or they are been there on a, a single screen whether your system supports the online data entry itself yeah so the three uh, online stuff includes whether your system supports online data entry yeah whether the online transactions are with multiple screens or single screen and whether the master file is been updated online so we have covered eight points now now the next two points are about the complexity whether the input process output are complex whether the input process output are complex and the next point is that whether the internal processing is complex so let us summarize all 10 points now first five fingers whether backup and recovery is included whether the system supports data communication whether it supports distributed processing functions whether it is uh, using a okay, performance criticality as a factor whether the os is been utilized heavily three online points whether your system supports online data entry next is whether the uh, online transactions are been distributed on multiple screens whether the master file is been updated online next two points dealing with complexity input process output are they complex and then lastly whether the input internal processing is complex so that was about the 10 points now how many are remaining four points so there is an almighty points okay there is only one unique word okay what about code reusability whether the code is designed for reuse whether the code is designed for reuse atma amar hai the soul is immortal right whether 
the code is designed for reuse right the next three points are about construction then the maintenance and the destruction these are called as brahma vishnu and mahesh points right so whether the installation is included in the design whether multiple installations can be done from the system and the last point what is the ease of use and ease of change what is the ease of use and ease of change so to repeat the three points last three points whether the system installation is been included in the design does your system supports multiple installations and the last one is that what is the ease of use and ease of change you must have been expecting that i am reading through this slide okay so i will keep the slide away now okay right now nothing is there in front of me first five points okay can i remember and can you remember just try to think about this 532 is the first model whether the system supports backup and recovery does it supports data communication whether it supports distributed processing functions whether the performance is critical what about the os utilization whether it is heavily utilized three are there for online issues whether the system supports online transactions whether the online transactions are being supported with multiple screens whether the master file is updated online that is a very serious situation online updates with the master file right it, it uh, indicates the flexibility right next two points are with complexity input process output is complex or internal processing is complex next point is about the almighty point that is whether the code is designed for reuse next three points are brahma vishnu mahesh points whether the installation is included in the design and can you do multiple installations of the same system and the last point is what is the ease of use and ease of change so all 14 points without looking at that i don't have any other laptop i have not referred to any kind of an written material here right so you can memorize this in the way that is been told to you 5 3 2 1 3 okay makes up the total to 14 right these factors let us say data communication gsc is been mapped on to the scale 0 to 5 that is from no influence to dominating or significant uh, kind of an uh, uh, you can say uh, influence so let us uh, go about directly with the example okay the fp is equal to uft multiplied by vaf that is unadjusted function points where you are having the number of inputs number of uh, outputs number of queries multiplied by the low average or high values that is 3 4 6 3 4 6 then 7 10 15 and 5 10 and 5 7 and 10 okay so moving next so ilm has got ret and det they are been related now if ret count typically it will be more than 5 okay so how to count the det and ret you are aware about that okay so uh, if uh, ret is 1 you will be picking up the range 1 to 90 then 20 to 50 and then greater than 51 if det therefore you have to go at the uh, bottom most kind of an level isn't it for ilf elements okay the record types right greater than 5 10 15 and 15 these values you have to pick up now uh, for the ei the original value was 346 for queries it was 346 for outputs it was 
4, 5 and 7. So initially these values will be there. Somewhere you will be finding it. Isn't it? Now let us consider EI. Basic values are 3, 4, 6. Do you find 3, 4, 6? Yes. But if the FTR, isn't it? FTR is greater than 2, then these things have been increased from 3, 4, 6 to 4, 6, 6. Right? In case of EO, the base size is what outputs now I am talking about. 457, right? 457. So, if FTR is 2 or 3, it is 457. Yeah. And in case of queries, yeah, it is 346. 346, okay. In the 2 or 3 FTR, it will be 346, ideal values. And then for ILF, it will be a 7, 10 and 15. Here you can see that between 2 to 5 range if it is. So in mid range, your ideal values will be there. 346, 346, 457, 7, 10, 15 and 5, 7, 10. Right? You will be either keeping that value constant or you will be doing certain addition to it. Okay? So, UFP, unadjusted function point, is sum of EI, EO, EQ, ILF, and EIF. Right? So, whatsoever the value that you will be getting, isn't that? That will be UFP. Okay? Let us say that if it is uh, greater than uh, 5 and the value is 7, so 7 has to be multiplied by either 10 or 15 or 15, right? Let us say that 7 multiplied by 10, so 78 comes in. Here let us say 78 is 148 will come in, right? So we have to sum there up, okay? And that will give us UFP. So here, uh, although 17 points are there, we are considering only 14, right? So VAF, that is value adjustment factor, comes up to be 0.65 plus sum of all the DIs that is uh, 1 to 14 points that I have stated earlier on in a table you have seen 1 to 14 points starting with the uh, backup and recovery to ease of use and ease of change those are required to be scaled on to 5 right 0 to 5 their sum is to be multiplied by 0.01. Yeah, so 0.65 will be maybe 1.65, maybe like that. Okay, so 1.65 multiplied by 122, isn't it? Or 150 or 200, right? So degrees of influence, right? No present, incidental, moderate, average, significant, and strong influence, right? So here, you have got the data elements, right, DETs, from 1 to 13, right, EI, isn't it, it is 1, FTR, 13 DETs, okay, is equal to 3 FPs, right, which values they have been selecting, okay, it's been mentioned. So, it's uh, total UAFP is equal to EI plus ILF is equal to 7 plus 3, 10. In the next uh, <coughs> example, you can see 4 FTRs, yeah, 7 has been selected, yeah, 7 pores are 28, yeah, 13 D8 is, comes out to be, 6 FPs, right? How it comes 6? Here it is. 6. Yeah? Greater than 2. Isn't it? Plus 6. It comes up to be 30. Okay. So, just see to it. What is being uh, added 10 multiplied by 1.29. From where 1.29 is been coming up? That is VAF. 
here and 34 multiplied by 129 so you will get two f page one is the low end f 13 and max f that is 44 so there are uh, formulas isn't that that is to work around that uh, 13 multiplied by 10.6 coming out to be 137 hours and uh, the time required okay, if it has been given 10.6 hours it is 466 hours. So now this is the description of GSCs when to use 0 and when to use 5. There are 14 characteristics. There are 14 tables like this. You can go around with these tables when so ever you are having time. Okay. 11, 12, 13, 14. Right. So we have tried with the example also on the web also there are solved examples of AP right have a look at that isn't it don't forget the base theory isn't it don't forget uh, the REDs okay don't forget 346 346 457 then 7 10 15 then 5 7 and 10 all right so those will be adding as multi so, carpooling problem, some statement is given like this. So, this is a very general statement. You have to now find out how many inputs are there, how many outputs are being there, okay, for such a kind of an system. How many queries could be there, how many logical databases will be there, yeah. For rooted database, right, it will come like that, okay. The driver's database, okay. bank account simulation. Okay, this is a big system, isn't it? Banking application. So just see to it that even though it is a banking application, it will be limited to you know between 500 to 1000 FPs. Vehicle auction management. Okay, below 500 now. This is yeah. Uh, Ola, Uber. They are having their own software, okay. The, if Twitter is uh, having uh, such a kind of a lesser uh, kind of an things, then this should come down to, you know, below 1000, right, points. Okay, all over applications. Pokemon now, okay. Constructive past model. One of the comprehensive and the simplest uh, kind of an, uh, models that uh, one can uh, visit. This is being uh, developed by Dr. Barry Bohem and uh, Barry Bohem has suggested few critical points. Estimation as a process. This is merely an uh, introduction. We know estimation now. We have seen FP, isn't it? The cost schedule and the resources, isn't it? Has to go hand in hand so that the asset handling can be done easily. The asset handling can be done easily. So therefore, Kokomo has been based on around on 2000 project studies, likewise it was, okay. And uh, this is an old metric that is Kokomo, but still it has been used for complex projects. Where it has been used? Complex projects. So in this uh, presentation, we will be studying only the limited version of Kokomo, not fullest version. Because we are not uh, applying this thing to any complex project as such, okay, whose, uh, you know, function point are uh, uh, above 1000 or 2000, right? So there is no connection of FP here, but still I can say you like that. So, Effort estimates, they are being made with the WBS, that is work breakdown structures, here. Yeah. And what are the steps? Establish the cost estimation objectives, why to do it, here. Yeah. Develop a plan for estimation activities and plan for the resources, here. Yeah. Poor planning may be becoming a disastrous kind of a situation to work out with or handle. So therefore, the third thing is clarify 
software requirements is ended engage the customer is ended as far as possible explore as much detail as feasible if the details are been hidden they will be lurking around in the corner waiting for your reaction at the end of the day last one is step 5 that is use several independent techniques right that is you have to have the mixins yeah so many of the things in kokomo they are been empirically calculated so uh, empirically means uh, studying of different kind of and projects of different types so that's the way kokomo goes right so let us visit to now kokomo the six and seven steps are about the compare and review the estimate accuracy well kokomo is a regression model right if x varies y also varies right regression analysis right you make the quantitative predictions of one variable from the values of another that is why could be calculated from x knowing the dependency of y on x right so let us go now okay with the linear models isn't it on the right hand side okay you have got the linear model Isn't it? With the multiple regressions, you can find the closeness. Okay, so the factor which is equal to a plus b x, where a and b are constant. So what you have to bother about? It's the linear progression of x. Isn't it value x? So uh, scatter diagrams on the left and on the right. Okay, how to increase the gram? Okay, there exists a plot and then. you can find out the closest point right so now there are the modes very important from kokob uh very bohem plotted uh, 63 projects right for doing this effort yeah uh for ap i have told you the figure 2000 right uh, till 2002 very bohem has covered uh around 2000 project and he was professor at uh, uh, which institute sunset dot edu his, his work was been available at sunset dot edu so there he was been uh, teaching around uh, comprehensively these particular types dr barry boham was the proposer of the spiral model which he eventually been taken by unified process right the spiral model they have intermixed the incremental also yeah so that's uh, what speaks about bohem's uh, contribution now later on uh, uh, barry bohem has realized that having only to work with the spiral is not feasible for small organizations so or Uh, it is unreachable for small domain problems so nowadays is been working around on uh, how to embed the kokomo with the uh, agile right yeah so that estimation techniques uh, are been available right so when ever the time comes in okay you can go about that so basic embedded intermediate and semi detached these are the three important uh, kind of um, stuffs uh, and there is uh, you know this comparison has been made on two grounds that is case law thousands of source lines of code thousands of source lines of code versus person month now this 2000 is number of person months and above 175 case law South K, okay, 175 K is the mode length, right? So just uh, try to situate okay, organic mode. Organic mode is typically for payroll, inventory, scientific calculators. Okay, so beginningly we will be using organic mode, semi-detached, 
is the next level. Compilers, database systems, and editors will come here. And in the third one, you work around with the real time systems. So they will be written with heavy duty kind of an code. Okay. The constraints are very tight, isn't it? And the response time has to be observed. Now, Pokemo levels. Last time we have seen this Pokemo modes, organic, semi detached, and the embedded. And here we are looking at the levels, basic, intermediate, detailed, right? This is based around on coverage of lines of codes, okay? This level uses only size and uh, mode to determine the effort and schedule. What it uses? Yeah. In intermediate, you have what 15 additional variables, right? And in detail, yeah, more than 15 variables are been there to determine the capabilities, right? So how this has been possible? So in organic kind of and mode, you have what 2 to 50 k long, yeah. Stable in-house development, it has been there. 50 to 300 k long, medium range, and embedded. 300 KL off. Now, do you write a code which is worth around 2 KL off with little kind of an innovation? Have you ever written a thousand sign code, 2K code, 5K code? Okay, but uh, one of the another thing, another side is that here you can uh, understand an answer is that that uh, is there any need to do that because such a kind of an abstractable languages are been there multiple scripting languages are been there variety of uh, higher level languages are been existing so do we need to narrate these 2k code 50k code these days the answer of that is no so therefore, the organic semi-detached and embedded modes, they are practically, uh, I mean, considering the technological context today, they may not be applicable, isn't it? Yeah? It's okay that in C, language like C, isn't it, you narrate a 2K to 50K uh, code, okay? It's okay for that. But for other kind of instars, isn't it? Where abstraction is the basic principle. Uh, even for Java, I will say okay. For C++, it is okay. But more abstract the language you will go around, is it? More built-in functions are been there. Then with that support, probably you may not be writing 2K code. Within 100 lines, your code will be finished, right? So does it mean that it is not belonging even to organic or little kind of innovation? The things are not like that. Okay. So don't get disheartened due to this uh, KLOF principles, right? Uh, so basic Pokemo size it uses, right? Let's say to it. Yeah. Effort E is equal to 2.4 multiplied by size raised to 1.05. So. Uh, Size has been there, effort formula, development time formula, development uh, time formula. Okay, there are the figures that you identify. 2.5 multiplied by E raised to 0.38, isn't it? Yeah. A and B are the variables, right? A is 2.4, 1.05 for organic. Okay. That is characteristics coefficients. Yeah. And uh, these values are difficult to remember, isn't it? So I'm not demanding to remember this, right? Going next, the duration can be calculated like this. Okay. Staff size is equal to effort multiplied by total development time. Intermediate Kokomo, as I have said to you. Uh, 15 uh, points are been there. Effort is equal to A multiplied by size raised to B multiplied by C. That is the characteristics. Okay. This characteristics are been 15 in number. Okay. What they are? Again, A and B 
variables are been stated okay 3.2 1.5 and so on so on right so these are the 15 points from product perspective there are three point from computer perspective there are four points five points are been there for personal and three are for project right so you do multiplication of eaf okay effort adjustment factor yeah for that you multiply all these things okay rely multiplied by data multiplied by complexity multiplied by time multiplied by storage yeah there is a big list that is eaf is equal to c1 multiplied by c2 multiplied by so and so and so and so on. okay so as you can see you should have these tables in front of you then only you can calculate right more complex it is okay this this fast drivers we have seen 15 in the first and uh, fast driver values there is a detailed table right again this is a very elaborated technique right so you have got product attributes very low to extra high range are been picked up that's why i was been saying that uh, you should have uh, these tables in front of you then only you can do the calculations otherwise not okay for independent attributes now it's been there okay just see to it reliability okay. just see to it. if effect is a slight uh, inconvenience to very high risk to human life if something can okay, risk to the life okay and see here that for complexity there is a separate table okay so unless and until you visit to these tables uh, i mean you are not going to calculate anything isn't it yeah see this is the complexity effort adjustment table a very low to extra high yeah this situate that difficult unstructured numerical analysis yeah and uh, i mean uh, this uh, issue noisy stochastic data right could be handled by you know uh, either data mining or machine uh, learning right so this these things can be really applied okay from these two areas so uh, probably uh, i said enough okay about the cocomos here yeah? because it was been tables isn't it and you have to actually work around on a problem then only you can get the uh, cocomo but the modes are very critical and the levels are very critical advantages and disadvantages one of the thing is that it is versatile it is easy to use it is well documented but it uh, doesn't take hardware into consideration and impact of security issues are in there so flawlex kind of an uh, uh, approach is not been there with the cocomo it comes up with flaws and that marks probably the end of the session